Good morning, this is Katherine Doverly, the answer lady. I'm going to show you today how to knit a tuck trim right onto your sweater. The sweater is finished first, but you knit and apply the trim at the same time. It's time saving and good looking and not difficult to do. Let's do it. I'm going to show you how to work the tuck trim found in this pattern. This is the luxury line lacy vest from News and Views. I've already cast on and knitted a few rows on five stitches. And I've got a claw weight on them, of course. I'm going to make sure that my carriage is set so that hold is hold. In this case, it's these levers on your Studio Singer style machine. It would be the NH button set to H on a brother. We're going to pull the center needle in the hole, knit four rows. push the center needle back to upper working position or adjust the levers and buttons so that it knits back and knit one row. If you adjusted your levers and buttons be sure to adjust them back because we want to knit four more hold rows. And this is the trim repeated all the way up the garment. Now in order to knit it right onto the garment we do one more thing. This is our pretend garment. As you probably know, every other row you get a long piece of yarn at one edge, at each edge actually. So here it is on the other edge. Followed by a short piece. These are known as knots and bars. And it has to do with the fact that the working yarn is not always on your side. It's wherever the carriage is. So that's why the variation. Not bar, knot, bar. The bars are of course easier to find and easier to hang so that's what we're going to use. Okay we're beginning. These would be on waist yarn if this were really the garment and now I would e-wrap or chain stitch. I would chain stitch to cast on with the main yarn. You could put a row of ravel cord in between. We're going to hang every fourth row using the bars. The edge alternates bar, knot, bar, knot, bar, knot. So every second bar is every fourth row. If we needed a tighter join we'd hang knots but in this case the join is going to be behind and hidden behind the trim so we won't worry about it and the bars are easier to hang. Let's knit a couple rows Make sure the carriage is set so the center needle will hold when we bring it out. Bring it out. Also hang the first bar on it. Knit four rows. Oops, I think a loop's forming. One, two, three, four. Knit it off. And we're working from the purl side so don't get twisted up. Row one, two, three, four. Hang this and pull it forward four rows. One, two, three, four. Knit it off. Count up two bars because that's four rows and repeat. And continuing. Do you need Oops, I didn't knit it off, but I can do that manually. That happens if you don't push your center needle quite far back enough. A thing to keep in mind is that the claw weight is barely enough weight to do a good job, so keep moving it up. Four rows. Four rows. Knit it off. Four rows. Knit it off. Now we're at the corner. There are no corners in this pattern, but I'm going to turn one in case you want to use the trim for a blanket. Let's do eight rows. But 
we are going to need to knit off in the middle or it gets too bulky. Now that extra will allow us to turn the corner. When you're hanging stitches, you hang every third rather than every fourth. So here's our first one. One, two, three, four. Knit it off. Make sure that that latch doesn't go under any of those loops. We're in this stitch. One, two, three, over. And repeat. One, two, three. Knit it off. We're in this stitch. One, two, three, over. And I think we just have this one to hang. And I'll scrap off for speed. Okay, let's have a look. See how nicely every fourth row causes the trim to align with the rows and every third with the stitches. And we made a nice corner, which you will not have to do on the pattern, but you might want to use this on a blanket too.